All right, construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the house down, and not because you pissed off a homeowner and you want to be done with the project. That house we're burning down is your business, your relationships, everything around what's holding you back to being the construction champion that I know you can be. So we're here. We're going to work on those things. You can find us here every Monday and every Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time, anywhere where you want to listen to a podcast, YouTube, you name it. We're there. And as always, you're not tuning in to hear Ron Newsbaum. You're tuning in to hear the amazing guests that we bring here. And today is no different. We have an amazing guest. CJ, it is great to have you on the show today. Thank you so much, Ron. I am super excited to be here and, and really excited to kind of dive in and help construction people continue to be champions. Awesome. Well, before we get started, why don't you share with all the champions out there a little bit about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I am CJ Bachman. I am the CEO of One SEO Digital Agency. We are a full service digital marketing agency located outside of Philadelphia, and we focus on three divisions. Um, our goal is to help home service, professional service, and health and wellness companies grow and thrive in an ever-changing industry. Um, as I mentioned, we're full service, so we offer anything from SEO to PPC, website design and development, email marketing, content marketing, social media, reputation management, you name it. Um, and as a full service agency, we focus on developing a lot of great partnerships, which allow us to also help our clients with things like OTT, billboard advertising, direct mail, all of those things that are getting your information in front of the homeowners that drive your business forward. Awesome. I love it. And it's always such a, a hot subject. It's stuff that people are always asking about. There's a lot of not a lot of clarity around it, I would have to say. So <laughs> I'm, ex I'm excited for our conversation today. But before we dive in, I'm going to jump right in and ask the million dollar question. And that is, what makes a construction champion? Introducing Buildercoms, your all-in-one construction communication software. Say goodbye to communication mishaps that cause frustration among builders, contractors, and clients. The Buildercoms platform unifies communications making it easy for you to chat, share updates, and collaborate effectively in one place. Experience the transformation in construction project management with Buildercoms. Visit us at Buildercoms.com to learn more and start streamlining your projects today. In my opinion, I believe a construction champion is an individual or business who has the goal of helping construction companies thrive in an ever-changing environment. I feel like there are a lot, particularly in the home service vertical, a lot of businesses who are struggling because of all of the te technological changes that are happening these days. And so they need allies. They need people that can they can depend on to help drive their business forward, as well as making sure the homeowners are getting the best quality product at the best prices as everything tends to evolve. So I think it's just having that mental focus of saying, hey, I'm going to build something. I'm going to help someone. I'm going to drive my business to help construction organizations thrive in this environment. I love it because that that <laughs> feeds right into what I said about with like SEO stuff can be mucky. Like it's, there's, there's so much money in construction. And what happens when there's a lot of money is you get a lot of predators. You get people that do not have that mindset that you just described and people can get taken advantage of. And it, it's, to me, I find it sad. Uh, I don't believe that's how this should be. And like a little due diligence and a little education could save people a lot of that. And I'm oh, sure you uh, run into it a lot. Yeah. And something that I see that a lot of people don't think about too, is that the industry is changing. Um, can, and if we just look at, you know, just construction and let's just take roofing, right? So businesses that go out and, you know, all they focus on is, is roofing, changing out roofing, fixing roofing, bringing out new materials, um, PE firms, capital organizations, venture capitalists, they're buying up these organizations. They're throwing money into them. They're creating these conglomerates. And what you're seeing is this massive change in construction, which is, a, someone used to start a business with the intent of, I'm going to build this as my family's legacy. I'm going to pass this down to my son. I'm going to pass this down to my grandchildren. And this is going to drive our family forward for the next 100, you know, 200 years. 
you don't get that much anymore. Mm. People start a business with the intent of how quickly can I exit? How can I get that generational wealth in the smallest amount of time, right? So what you're seeing happening now is these construction companies that really could get away with word of mouth and just, you know, who you know and getting in bed with builders so that they had this constant, you know, stream of, of construction going on. It's not happening at, as much anymore. And they're needing to actually start to learn how to market their business, how to stand yeah. apart. It's getting muckier. It's getting, you know, the waters are definitely getting more filled with competitors. And so that change has to happen. So to your point, yeah. SEO is not smoke and mirrors like people used to think of 10 years ago. Just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it doesn't work, right? So it's finding and partnering with someone that is really going to focus on what your business goals are and what you need to do to achieve that. So for these days, for some people, it is full force and paid advertising and, and getting as many deals through those channels as you can. For other companies, it's about networking. It's about getting involved in groups where you're becoming a thought leader and businesses coming to you that way. It's about getting in front of a built a groups of builders and talking about teaching them something about construction that your business does really well. And now you've got referrals that are coming to you through these channels. So marketing is changing. And I do think the home service industry and construction is suffering the most right now because the massive changes are hitting them a lot quicker than some other industries. Yeah, no, I agree. And you bring up uh, a great point that what we're seeing, well, what we've seen happen in the HVAC industry with the consolidation we're now seeing in the roofing industry a year ago i was on here and i had said that i believe that consolidation is coming for the entire construction industry and if you're not if you're going to want to stand out in that market where you have big money in your area that's going to own remodeling companies or it's going to own builder like I believe that the construction industry is one of the only industries as a whole that has never went through a major consolidation where big money came in and bought up. Like you said, these it's been people's businesses for hundreds, 200 years. Like these are the legacies and they're getting bought up and rolled up. And if you're not going to be part of that, you have to figure out how are you going to stand out in that order? And it's coming, like it's happening right now in the roofing industry. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Our old ownership, that's what he does for a living now, right? He works with roofing companies and helping them prepare and set up their businesses for exit. Like it is it is massive. And, you, and you're dead on that it started in heating and air conditioning. And there's a couple of things that I think a lot of people don't think of of think of when they think about PE firms coming into your organization. So these construction companies that have just ran their business the way they're running their business, that have dumped money where they need to dump money, that watched us to see where their leads are coming from, are now having to answer questions are like, what's your CAC in this, you know, marketing? What is your, you know, what is your, your customer acquisition cost in this channel? You know, how, what is your ROI or your return on ad spend here? And these business owners, they don't have these answers because they've never had to ha talk that language before. But as soon as you start getting prepared for exit, as soon as you start talking to PE firms or capital venture firms, these are the questions that they're asking because that's what they need to know to scale. And that's what's happening. They want to take these small construction companies and they want them to scale. Sky's the limit. They want to create monopolies. Um, so you've got to have solid marketing. You've got to understand your data and you've got to know where your leads are coming from in order for you to be prepared for the next stage of your business. And I think if you don't know those numbers, whether you want to sell it or not, you're wrong. Like that's all stuff you should understand as a business. I, and I love because that's what you do is you help people understand that, like whether they're preparing for exit or not. I always say you should always be building your business like you're going to sell it, even if you're going to keep it for the next hundred years, because you don't know what could happen. You don't if stuff changes. But like these are just numbers people should know, but they avoid knowing because they they're just like, ah, well, I'm not I'm not in that position. But how do you run your business not knowing where your leads are coming from or what the cost of them is like it's and all if just you wait if you wait to get those numbers in order until you're ready to talk exit 
that just prolongs the the process, right? Like they're just automatically going to want a clean PL and they're going to want all of this information. And if you aren't setting your business up to know where your profit is and where your profit isn't, you're just delaying that process. So it's exciting when you get ready to sell, right? Everybody wants a payday. It's super exciting. But when you start sharing your information and talking to brokers and you have and you realize that they're like, oh, well, your EBITDA number isn't anywhere where it needs to be. Most construction companies, um, the smaller ones are like, EBITDA what? <laughs> like, because it wasn't part, it wasn't in their thought process. Now that's ingrained, right? Like I said, we're literally seeing businesses call and say, hey, I need to dump as much as I can into my marketing right now because I'm looking for an exit. My mind immediately was like, okay, well, can you fulfill this? <laughs> if, oh. if we ramp it up, like, can you, can you fulfill? Like, are you prepared? Are you ready for this? Because it's a drastic change. I, you just brought up an amazing point right there because that's, I think, a misconception in around the construction industry, especially with marketing and stuff, is I can just turn it on and we'll make it happen. Yeah. And I mean, I built a 200 person operation department and like it, that's not how it works. Like you can turn it on and the leads can come in, but the just make it happen. That's the hard part, <laughs> like <laughs> having your, like, I love that you asked that because a lot of companies would just be like, all right, let's turn it on. And then that company's screwed. Like they can't do the work. Yeah. And what happens too, is it's a lack of planning and you see a lot of this from COVID. So, you know, a lot of construction companies, especially your residential, you know, construction companies were super busy during COVID. Everybody's home. They're ta tackling projects that they weren't necessarily tackling before. They're adding those additions. They're, you know, completely remodeling and all of that kind of stuff. So they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're taking on that work. And then they're hiring people, getting, you know, going through that process. And then the market changes, right? People are back at work. You don't have a family of five you know, causing plumbing issues, or you don't got that, you know, mother working from home who is so tired of looking at that kitchen that she's pulling the trigger on that project. So that goes down. And then they turn to their marketing company. They're like, what? I need them. I need them. I hired people for them. Well, that's cool. You hired them, but you got to think of those times like unions, right? You swell with the market and you got to shrink, mm. you know, when the market changes, businesses are really struggling with that concept because there was such a drastic change during COVID. Um, yeah. So it's leveling uh out. Yeah, I was, but we're in the construction and there's ebb and flows to it. Like, I think hindsight's 2020 guys, like it's, <laughs> there, there's, there's ebb and flows to it. And we, you have to kind of, you have to understand that and be able to control that kind of stuff and understand yeah. what leads are coming in. What's that going to look like? like? What do you convert this stuff at? Like, it's, it's all math. Like you, I, you get this at a high level because this is what you do for a living. Uh, but I don't think guys necessarily understand like it's so many leads come in. We convert so many of them. It equals this many projects, which average length of project it books us out this fall. Like the, the, it's, you have to understand that stuff so you can then go find people that are experts and yep. Uh, with SEO and stuff, I'm a firm believer, like you find somebody that's an expert and then let them do it for you. So you, you aren't messing it up. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> you got to do what you're good at, right? You got to focus on what you're good at. And the one thing that I, I see today that is it actually hurts a lot. You've got so many people that just want marketing to be something that you just turn on and you walk away from. And in business, it doesn't work like that. There's so much things happening internally inside of a business that your marketing company needs to know. They need to understand. They need to know your ability to fulfill leads that are coming over. They need to know, you know, when your job boards aren't full um, and, you know, when you have a lack, they need to know the quality of leads that are coming over. We can't, you know, we can't guarantee that we're going to send you over, you know, the exact type of leads you need. So that feedback is important. We need to know what you're seeing so that we can tweak and monitor, you know, campaigns. Um, a little fun fact, though, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if it wasn't for markets changing. So I actually changed jobs when the subprime loan crash happened back in 2000. 2008, and I left a construction that heavily involved in the marketing aspect, moving away from sales and it was only a result of that change in market and watching businesses who had all their eggs in new construction fail miserably um you know because they weren't prepared um you know it's uh, like heating and air conditioning companies that were all new construction had no work for two years as these you know 
uh, builders were sitting on all of these, you know, lots of homes that they couldn't fill because of the mm. su supply prime loan, loan crash. So I had to focus on building up a service base, right? That's a contingency plan. How do you keep your business busy in all seasons, right? Construction has seasons, right? There are times where building can just not happen or it's happening a lot less. Do you know the seasonality to your business? Do you know when you have more leads coming in, when you have less leads coming in? A marketing company, particularly a good marketing company, will be able to help you identify that so that you can start to plan around that um, to make sure that you don't have as many ebbs and flows. Um, so you're you're correct. Like it's just so many people just expect for things to just move at you know that pace or hockey stick growth. We don't live in that kind of world. Evolution is happening. Look at where we are right now. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think the, a great point there that you bring up is that feedback loop. Like you said, like people, we feel like you can just go hire somebody and it's just automatically going to happen and it's going to be great. And then when it's not great, we blame them, but we didn't have any conversations in between. There was right. never like, oh, we're getting these leads, but these leads don't even necessarily fit exactly what we do. Uh, here's what we're most profitable at. Like, here's what we would like to focus on. There's none of those conversations. It's just like, you go find somebody that is, and I'm, I use this terminology because there's a lot of people out there that don't know what they're doing. You go find somebody that claims they're a race car driver and you put them in a Lamborghini and then they wreck it. And you're like, wow. I don't understand exactly what happened, but there was no conversation between handing the keys off or why they were driving it. And that's the same thing with when you hire an expert to do something for your business. You have to be, you have to have these conversations back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be surprised the number of people that are like, um, you know, I pay you to do it. I don't want to have to think about it. Okay. Well, that's, that's cool, but it's your business. So if you want me to run your business, okay, we can change it. Now I need your PL and I need this and I need that. And like, okay. You know, but if, when you hire a marketing agency, it's a, it's, a, it's an extension of your team and you have to treat it that way. And you have to, like, you're giving money to us. So it's always so enamored when a teammate here will come to me and say, hey, CJ, can you help me get in touch with this client? They've missed their last three meetings. Mm. And I'm like, oh, oh, like you're giving us money, but you're not talking to us. That math doesn't math. <laughs> <laughs> and you're expecting results like yeah. that, like that. Guys, we can do better. Like we can do yep. better as an industry. Like and then, like I said, then it's the, the service providers fault. Then it's like, ah, well, they just sucked. Well, did they suck or did you suck in this situation? Like what exactly? Yeah, it can be a combination of both sometimes too, right? The world's not perfect. So that's where those feedback loops become so critical, right? Because if things were going well for a period of time and then something changes, mm -hmm. we need to know. Just the same way as we'll tell you, hey, listen, you were having 85% of your calls answered. Now we're only seeing about 65%. What changed? What happened? Um, you know, having those conversations and asking the right question, um, it's just a great relationship when it works that way. Yeah, no, absolutely. And you don't know, like, that's how you figure out if it's a good fit as well as having these conversations and continuing to have those conversations. Because like you said, stuff changes. There's a lot of ebb and flow. If you're not getting on these monthly or weekly calls or whatever that cadence is you set up, stuff changes in your business. And if you're holding somebody responsible for do, to do a section of your business, you need to be having these meetings. It's like if you had a team and they didn't they weren't showing up to the to the weekly meetings, you would be like, what's wrong with this team member? Like just because you're hiring somebody that's an expert to do this, that's not necessarily an employee, doesn't mean you don't have any responsibility to not just show up and to not report and have these conversations. Like I, I think that is a misconception around what it's what exactly it is when you go hire an agency or hire a professional to do something in your business is you just feel like people feel like they can just be hands off and that's how shit hits the fan absolutely what i what i love about the the shift that's kind of happening in the world today is that the mastermind concept is back and it's back full force, right? And it's not new, right? Napoleon Hill, Carnegie, they talked about the mastermind, you know, concept and how important that is. 
So when I really am I'm talking to some of our, our clients and we're talking about the, the feedback loop and, and how important it is for them to be involved, I you know really think about most businesses, when you get up to the top, they're in a mastermind group, right? They're bouncing ideas off of like-minded people because they know that that's what it's going to take to take their business to the next level. You need to have that same concept when it comes to the vendors that you're paying. You want to be a mastermind with them. You want to mm. be able to flush out ideas. Uh, you know, a good example is I just had a conversation with a client and we're going to be looking to help them kind of build out. And some of the technology already exists, but being able to use uh, drones to do measurements and get an estimate that will kind of happen live time. The drone sends information back. That information creates the estimate. The estimate goes to the client. Um, but that kind of thing happens when clients want to talk, right? And they're like, how can we be different? How can we add something unique? Um, and we don't do that. Like, that's not a thing we do, but we can help guide the clients and provide, you know, those recommendations. But that only happens in that mastermind moment mm -hmm. when they're like, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's powwow. What can we do differently? How can we stand apart? Um, and that's what's going to take in marketing as we move forward. Businesses are going to have to get serious about wanting to be different, wanting to be unique, wanting to find out their unique um, you know, value proposition. Um, and they're going to want to work with agencies to mastermind and kind of brainstorm around those solutions. Well, I mean, I think that's where the power is at uh, in that is because you can go to somebody that has vast experience across multiple demographics of, across more and have that conversation, have that mastermind with them. And they're going to be help, able to help direct you in a way that you can't because you don't you don't have the ability to go get all that knowledge. Like you just don't like I'm having my website redone right now. And I went and found one of the best people I could that understood not just websites, but construction SaaS and all of this stuff. And we had an hour and a half conversation. And I was like, this is what I want. This is what I feel and he's like, all right, well, I I understand that, but like, here's the trends. Like, I do this for a living. I th here's what I would recommend because I think you're you're headed in the right direction, but it's not what the grand scope of what we see works. Right. And if you can't have like, it's when you hire an expert. That's why you want to have these conversations and mastermind with them. I, that's a great terminology to use because. Yeah. That's what you're doing because you're not just buying the skill set, you're buying the knowledge set that they have, that they have went out and developed. So you're investing in that they have the skills to do what you want to have done. And then you're paying a premium a lot of times to then have that knowledge that they're going to be able to do it better than not just anybody else, but better than everything because you're going to come together with them and they're going to take your mind and be able to actually make it make sense in a way that it's going to work. That was a lot right there out of yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, pay me for my experience, not my time. Mm -hmm. Like that's, you hear that in, you know, construction and, you know, and that, and, and that's really what it is. Like you could get someone to do something cheaper. You could get someone to do something quicker, but you know, that's that old thing. You can't have it quick and good and cheap. <laughs> like you can only pick two, right? So it's a matter of, like you said, is, you know, let dropping your ego at the door, right? And it, just acknowledging you could learn from someone and you can also sell, you know, educate them and being willing to have that conversation where it's like, oh, you know what? I'm so glad you recommended that because I was thinking this, but now that you said it, I, you know, I appreciate that. You know, marketing, I know construction. And, you know, that's a much valuable conversation. Yeah, it can be a huge win-win for both parties because mm -hmm. both parties get to learn and get to grow to other and it just helps everybody. But it's it's having that open dialogue between whoever is involved. And like I said, you want to accept it from an employee. So why would you accept it because you're hiring somebody else? Like it, To me, it just doesn't make any sense, but that's what we see happen. I like that analogy that you used, though, because when you do hire someone else, it's basically outsourcing your labor and you wouldn't hire an employee to sit in your office that you don't know what they're doing or what's going on, that you're not checking in, you're not having a conversation. So you've got to treat your, you know, your vendors that way. You want to learn from them. You want to know what's happening, what's going on and what value can they give you outside of just the service that you hired them for? Yeah, I I treat I, I've always treated vendors as more of a collaborative relationship in whatever, whatever I, whatever that is, the service that they're offering. And this goes back to 
15 years ago, if it was somebody hanging drywall or today, somebody doing my website is they're only going to be able to deliver as good of a product as I let them deliver like that. That's what it comes down to. It's you're as the business owner, you're like, you're the crutch on all of this. And if you're not willing to in you're willing to invest financially, you have to be also be willing to invest your time and resources into that company. Cause if you're not happy with the end result, a lot of times probably go look in the mirror and it was a disconnect there on what you set them up for. Like you're yeah. setting that company up for success. Yeah. I think something else too that people need to think about when you think about pairing yourself with a marketing agency, they're going to be able to give you insight into what other people in your industry are doing. They're going to cut out some of that framework. They're going to ask you questions like, why aren't you offering you know, a promotion like this? Or why aren't you utilizing a vendor like this? Why don't you have a CRM like this? Like, They're going to be able to show you where your gaps are compared to companies that are doing more in revenue than you or companies that have been where you're at and are now at a you know different level. So I think that's also a value that a lot of people don't take advantage of. Well, it's 100%. And if you're doing business with somebody and they're not asking those kind of questions, there it, it's wrong. Like that's, if they're not pushing you and asking specific questions, like that's what you're paying for. Because yeah. you can go get any any fly by night to do whatever. And they're, if they completely agree with you on every, to me, that's one of the biggest red flags. If I'm talking to somebody and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're like, that's great. We can do all, like, to me, that's a red flag. Like, one of the things that I'm buying here is your feedback and experience across the board and what's happen, happening nationally. And if people aren't willing to critique that or accept that, like, to me, don't do business with people that just are going to take everything that you say and run with it <laughs> if they're the expert. Like, chances are you're not that good. Maybe you are, but <laughs> chances are you probably aren't. <laughs> Love it. Awesome, CJ. Well, it has been a fantastic conversation today. I always love when we have an expert on here that knows their shit inside and out, and we can have a fantastic conversation around it. So for all the champions out there listening, if they wanted to connect with you, learn more about what you what you do, follow you, where's the best places for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. The best place is to go to our website at one seo.com and then you can always find me on linkedin facebook uh, twitter the whole nine yards at cj bachman with two n's i'm happy to talk with anyone share our knowledge our expertise and talk to you about some of the cool things that we have going on for the home service industry awesome well thank you for taking the time and being on the show today absolutely ron thank you so much i hope you have a wonderful day and looking forward to uh what's next for construction Awesome. All right, construction champions, another episode in the bag. And I love when we have rock stars on that, like I said, know their shit, because we can have a real conversation about what's happening out there. And this is no different. The construction industry is changing. Like we talked about a year ago, there's consolidation happening that's going to span through the entire industry. And there's one of two things you can do is you can pretty much just die which I'm sure none of you want to do, or you can start getting your eggs in a row right now. Whether you plan on selling or not, you're going to have to operate like the other companies. It's the only way you're going to be able to compete. You're not going to be able to continue doing what you're doing right now. Let's say if you're a roofing company, and we know everybody, it's not, it's not an elephant in the room. We know. Private equity is buying up roofing companies right now all over the country. If you're a roofing company and you're not planning on selling to private equity, you better get your shit lined up because you're going to be competing against, competing against conglomerates that have a lot more resources, that have somebody like CJ that can do not just locally, nationally campaigns and create all of this marketing for them, you have to be prepared to go up against that or else they're going to eat your lunch. 
So not from not just from a marketing perspective, but from a service perspective, from a work perspective, you're going to have to step up. And that's it's the roofing industry this year and next year. The year after that, who knows what it's going to be? Is it going to be remodelers or is it going to be builders or is it, is it going to be cider? Like it, there's so many variables, that, but the consolidation is going to continue because there's money in construction. And they realized what they could do in HVAC. Now they're realizing what they can do in roofing and they're, they're just going to move through. So whether you want to sell your business or you want to continue running it, these are the things that you're going to have to do. You need to get in touch with somebody like CJ, somebody at her company, her, and start figuring this stuff out proactively because once it's knocking on your door is not the time to pick up the phone and try to fix it. Uh, we've had that conversation on here plenty of times. So construction champions, make sure you go out and check out all of our fantastic sponsors. And until next time, be the champion that you're meant to be. Introducing Buildercoms, your all-in-one construction communication software. Say goodbye to communication mishaps that cause frustration among builders, contractors, and clients. The Buildercoms platform unifies communications, making it easy for you to chat, share updates, and collaborate effectively in one place. Experience the transformation in construction project management with Buildercoms. Visit us at Buildercoms.com to learn more and start streamlining your projects today.